went to a small private school for high school and I really enjoyed um, sort of that close inclusive learning um, environment where I could talk to my teachers and it wasn't like a huge lecture hall of you know 300 people and I felt like just another fish so I was definitely looking for that sort of atmosphere um, visited campus and met some of the teachers and really just fell in love with everything it's just beautiful and um, you know they tell you that you kind of get that feeling you'll know like when you know and uh, I just stepped on campus and I just knew immediately that I wanted to be here I originally when I was in high school I wanted to be a writer and um, at some point during my sophomore or junior year, I, uh, I played uh, a Legend of Zelda game that had this really awesome story and I was like, oh, hey, I can have technical skills and do cool creative things at the same time. Coding is a creative process. Computer science, coming up with algorithms, how to do things efficiently, requires a very nimble mind, one that needs to be able to come up with new ideas, to be able to, just like in design thinking, see patterns out there, problems, and then make new ideas and um, solve for something that is better. I also, you know, watched my dad grow up starting businesses and so I knew that was something I wanted to do and there's a lot that goes into like finding the confidence and the courage to like one, come up with an idea and then be like, all right, let's go for it. So Blue Butter is the company that I own um, and have started and we actually just won a pitch competition and are heading to Paris next week for an app that we're creating called Norma um, and it's to help women track and record changes but um, there's absolutely no way I would have ever gotten involved in anything Thing like that or felt that I could actually do it um, if it weren't for DU and for you know my experiences learning with the programming and with the leading the club and with Girls Who Code I knew that um, I could be an inspiration to people and we you know literally could change lives so we can help women detect cancer early um, I mean that is like the most rewarding feeling ever like talking to women and um, you know hearing them say like that they found a lump and they're gonna be okay because you know they found it at an early stage rather than you know four weeks later I'm a Japanese minor, and I also really like doing other things too. That's one of the beautiful things about being a computer scientist is that um, I just feel like it's a, such a good way to connect all these really cool things. I received an email from some random website, but they were talking about this awesome opportunity for this conference where there are Japanese technology companies looking for Japanese Engl English bilinguals uh, to hire. And I just thought that that was a huge chance that I could not pass up because I studied abroad in Japan and I've been studying Japanese for I think like three years now in college and that was just such a intersection of everything that I wanted so I went to that conference I felt great I got all of this awesome experience and I just really felt at that moment like wow I made a good choice because this field that I'm going into is super applicable to the world I could easily find a position where I would be able to, I guess, meet all of my passions. And I thought that that was such an amazing thing. I'm super happy that it did happen. <laughs> so I'm on a research team uh, with Dr. Lopez um, and also Dr. Jing Li from the geography department. And we're working together in this kind of interdisciplinary research effort to develop parallel processing algorithms for LiDAR data. Um, motivated by uh, USGS basically has, has improved the technology involved in LiDAR scanning so that um, they can fly a plane over a region and take uh, scans of the terrain with a resolution of one square meter. This is really, really awesome because that's significantly more precise than it's ever been before. But it's also problematic because any area that a geographer would be interested in studying is large enough that data with a resolution of one square meter is really, really dense and it's a lot of data and it takes forever to, to do anything useful with. Uh, so we're hoping that the algorithms that we develop will help geographers be able to take this new denser data and be able to achieve more accurate studies uh, still in reasonable time frames. So I feel really, really lucky to be able to have a part on this team uh, in my undergrad, uh, which is something that DU is just really great about is having opportunities for undergraduate research. Where a BS and CS will differ from one school to another school is what those electives are that are available to the students, and that's often determined by the faculty research area and the faculty that you have in the program. 
So we have faculty that are interested in cybersecurity, in data science, in um, algorithms, in software engineering, in databases, in programming languages. So all of those areas, game development, all of those areas then have uh, a suite of electives available to students to be able to choose from as a result of that in-house expertise. I think a big part of the reason how I even got here was just explore your options. If there's a class that sounds interesting to you, just take it. I mean, it really won't hurt you in the end. You need electives anyways. So if intro to computer science sounds cool, take it. If drawing sounds cool, take it. You never know where you'll find your passions unless you go and explore those things for yourself. But, you know, all, all of the professors are people that I can just kind of go and talk to people that if I find them in, in like the department lounge, we can have a conversation about random things like Super Smash Bros or the current political climate or things completely unrelated to class because they're, they're awesome as people as well as as teachers. Uh, it's... It's just so much nicer when your teachers are approachable people. There's no like tricking someone into, you know, thinking that it's going to be this super easy, you know, joyous ride. I mean, it's it's like one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done, like programming and like sitting there for an hour, like to learn that you had one semicolon missing, you know, and uh, you know, it, it feels so good when you finally figure that out. And I can't even think about another instance where I get that much satisfaction from working so hard on something and then finally being like, yes, I did it. Thank you.